Hi guys, Matt Collins here from Beausoleil. Today I'm going to be showing you how I cast accurately, how to hit the clip and how to feel for that all important donk. So to start with, I've just got a normal fishing rod here. I've got braid on this and a bare lead so it's basically set up as a leading rod. I'm going to use this for the demo initially because it's going to give you a really good indication, a visual indication of when that lead is hitting the bottom and you'll see the flex in the tip. We've got braid on here so the first thing I've got to do is wet the spool. So this is all about hitting the clip. I've just cast out here to a known mark and then I take the line and I wrap it once, twice around the clip. I always go clockwise. It's just my preference I guess. You can go either way. So the first thing we need to get right is the feet. I'm right handed so it's the left foot forward. Now I, I angle mine at kind of 45 degrees to the spot that I want to uh, cast to. My right hand foot a little bit wider than a foot uh, than a uh, shoulder width apart basically 90 degrees to the bank. Once we're happy with the feet we need to get the drop right. Now if I put that up there you'll see that I'm somewhere between the bottom ring and the spigot. If I was looking for maximum distance I'd want to be around the spigot but if I'm looking for accuracy a slightly foot, a shorter drop is what I what I prefer basically. Uh, arms extended, lining the rod up with the far distance marker, push and pull, hit the clip and raise the rod. So basically I, I went forward, I pointed the rod at the lead when it hit the clip as it hit the clip, I then drew back, raised the rod, and that maintains tension in the line. If you lose contact with the lead, if this goes soft, you won't feel the donk. I'm just going to run through that again. Tweak the lead to make sure he's not tangled around the tip. Bail arm open. Arms back and extended. We're pushing with the right hand arm, we're pulling with the left hand arm and these two hands need to go through in an arc. Hit the clip, lovely. The secret is you've got to cast just hard enough. If you don't cast hard enough obviously you're not going to hit the clip. If you cast too hard you're going to get bounced back. So the force of the cast is all. If you're struggling to hit the clip, and this is, this is something that takes a lot of practice, I found that if you hold the rod flatter when the lead hits the clip just above the surface, and as soon as it's going to hit the clip you start slowly raising the rod, that will make sure that you're in contact with the rod for longer. It's also a really useful technique. If you're fishing over a, um, uh, over a shallow spot, you know, something like three or, three or four foot deep, trying to feel the donk over that amount of depth is very difficult. But if you virtually lay the rod flat, overcast it and draw it up, just as you start raising the rod, just before you hit that clip, it's a lot easier to do. So that's feeling the donk with a dedicated leading rod. I've got very little stretch in this braid, so it's, it, it's kind of easier. You get a huge amount of sensation traveling up through the rod. And I can tell, you know, the firmness of the donk that I get, just how hard that spot is, even before I've dragged it back, yeah? If it's on firm silt, I'm gonna get a, a thud. If I'm on rock or gravel, it's absolutely gonna smack down. It's gonna feel very different when we actually use a fishing rod. I've marked this fishing rod up at exactly the same distance. So let's have a go with that now. So we've just got a standard three, uh, three ounce pair, one meter of leader and some 20 pound mono here. So very typical kind of general carp fishing setup. 
I haven't put the rig on yet, that's next stage. So stance is the same, target's the same, action's the same. Okay, I get much less feel, much less, in, more in, much less information transmitted through the mono here. Still hit the clip, still felt the donk, but it doesn't feel anything like it does on the leading rod there, yeah? I'm fishing mono now compared to the leading rod. I have to use more force to cast this than I do the other one because it's much finer, of course. Because of the lack of the feel I get through the mono, it's much more difficult to tell when I'm landing on very, very hard or slightly softer, yeah? You just don't get the information transmitted through the rod. So this is why I like to use a leading rod so I can be very sure of exactly what's there and what I'm gonna land on. And then when it comes to my fishing rod, as long as I hit that clip, and I, the rod finishes at the same angle, I can be very sure of what exactly I'm fishing on. So things changed a lot when we went from a leading rod to a standard fishing rod with mono. Now I'm gonna add, add a rig, and that's gonna add even more resistance. So the rig alone will add resistance in the air, so I'm gonna to have to cast a little bit harder. Also, this rig is gonna slow the um, lead down as it falls through the water so it's going to fall slower. It gives us a bit more time but it feels different. Now that was very soft actually in the end. I know it's absolutely bang clean out there but if it wasn't for the leading rod I wouldn't really have a lot of confidence whether I'd landed on something uh, hard or, or soft. So you get a degradation in feedback through the blank as we go from leaded rod with braid, fishing rod with a lead and mono, to fishing rod with an actual rig. I could make it even less sensitive by attaching a uh, a small PVA bag of, of crumb or pellet or a, or a PVA stringer etc. It might help make the cast kind of more tangle free but in terms of feeling the donk it dulls the sensation so if you're fishing a spot where it's really important to know you know it's a small spot perhaps and you're looking for that absolute the same feel each time then I'd definitely go for just a single bait without any PVA etc and possibly even a smaller bait in order to get the ultimate feel. So feeling the donk is a fundamental part of my, my carp fishing. It does multiple things. First of all, as we've seen it enables us to tell, tell us what we're fishing over. Now when that lead's flying through the air like that, lead is obviously going first. When I hit the clip, the lead decelerates, drops, and starts to spring back, basically. At the same time, it throws the bait forwards, like that. So the leg comes forwards, stops, leg goes, rig goes forward, drops, comes back. And what it does is that the lead is pulling the rig straight. Now, landing this like that on the water when it's falling through the water like that, it means that this is held straight all the way to the bottom. So it eliminates tangles, yeah? Just getting that rig to turn over, eliminates tangles, falls through like that. And it means that your presentation is spot on. As you get more into this, you'll notice that different leads fall through the water at different speeds. So we started off with a three ounce flat pair. Now, I've got here a three and a half ounce trilobe. Now this trilobe falls through the water, almost kind of flutters down like that. Now, if I'm fishing a very, very shallow spot, like three foot deep, 
and I want to feel the donk, then fishing a lead like that, it's going to fall through the water slower. It's going to give me, it might only give me another quarter of a second in order to get that drop, but it can be the difference between getting a reliable donk and just missing it time after time. So let's have a little chuck with a trilobe here. Same spot, same distance. So much slower through the water. Hit the clip the same, depth is the same, everything's the same. Probably took three times the length of time for that trilobe to hit the bottom. Got a lovely little donk through the braid here. So specialist leads like that do have a role to play in certain circumstances. In order to be able to routinely and consistently cast accurately, it's very important that our line's in good condition. Now, getting quite warm today, this spool will dry out very quickly. Now, I'm resting the swim during the day, fishing at night. If you're doing that during a session, here's a great little tip. Take a, a sweat band, an arm band. This is just one that you buy uh, down the sports shop. Get it nice and wet. And fit it over the spool to make sure it's completely soaked all the way through. Give it a final dosing. Now even in warm weather, that water and that sweat band is going to keep that line nice and moist. You've got to remember, nylon, mono, is hydroscopic. Hydroscopic means that it absorbs water over time. Now, if it absorbs water over time, it also loses water over time. Dry line is coily and horrible to fish with. So if you keep your spools wet like this, especially during dry weather, when you go to fish with them, the line will go fly beautifully through the rings. It'll be coil free. It'll lay lovely on the bottom. So much nicer to fish with. Hope you found those tips useful guys. If you've got any questions, do leave me a comment. I do try and respond to them all.